Hello. Hi, guys. It's about almost three in the afternoon. Okay, I'm just Miss Shaky here. There we go. So I thought I would do War Stories Part 3 while I waited on some veggies to cook. I'm cooking a variety of different vegetables to take to my son. We're trying to get my grandson to eat more vegetables. And apparently he doesn't like the way my son cooks them, so he ate my string beans. So we're going to try, well, I'm trying something different. I'm doing a sweet potato, a mashed sweet potato like you do mashed potatoes because he does like mashed potatoes. And some candied carrots, some corn on the cob, and he loves beans and peas, so I'm making him some black eyed peas. I have some string beans in there, but I thought I might wait. And I'm just going to take the hamburger meat. I was going to make Salisbury steak, but huh, Grandma don't feel like doing that. So I'm going to take the hamburger meat to my son, and he can just add it to the vegetables. So yeah, while I'm waiting for that to cook, I thought I would do part three. I think I stopped off where it was my first day, and I had busted up my Walkman, and I was really sad about that. I tell you what, um, that almost made me cry besides the fact that I slept in that cot with one side up fixed right and the other one just leaning down. It looked like um, one of those uh, stretcher things that they used to use in the war because one side was down and the other side was up. So yeah, things did get a little bit better. Someone helped me put my cot together and each tent held 12 people. So by the time things were said and done, we had 12 females in the tent. And I took the back corner, since I was earlier, I got to pick my spot. And we realized real quickly that we needed some privacy because you got 12 females. Some of us knew each other. For the most part, the rest of us did not. So I got real um, crafty while I was over there. Um, let me describe the tent city. So we're in the, literally in the middle of the desert. Um, and so by the time we left, we had tents, you know, that everybody slept in and they were air conditioned. We had a, a rec center tent where you could go. And at this time, you know, all this technology we have now was not around. So you could send videos to your family, but it was going to be VCR and they could send some to us and they would play them in the rec tent. So you were hoping that your family said something decent because there were some hmm, that were quite embarrassing for the individuals they got sent to. And then they would play movies in there. We had a library tent, which I spent a lot of time in. I think I read like 50 to 100 books. I can't remember exactly. That is what I did for my 12 hour shift when I was not working. Because for the most part, once we got moved into our own trailer, the guy I work with would go back to the tent that we were in originally so he could hang out and have someone to talk to. So he went down there to talk to the guys. I was very happy to let him go because, like I said, um, I really didn't like working with him. He was so loud and uh. So I was happy that he wanted to go down there with the guys and I was willing to do the work by myself. Um... We also had, okay, the chow tent. We had two of those. We had a tent where they did medical, one for like the orderly room. Seemed like we had, oh, shower tents for male and female. Then they got us some porty john so we didn't have to share the bathroom tent. So that was a plus. And, you know, when I think back now, I can't believe how I was able to acclimate myself to all the things that you have to in a situation like that. But going to a porty john began to feel normal. We all had to build bunkers outside of our tents because of the fact of the Scud missiles. So each tent, you know what Parker does this every time. Each tent had um, like a bean bag, bean bag. I can't talk when I get on here sandbag um bunker so we all another day of filling sandbags and then we built our bunker and we would go in there and smoke if you want to smoke and go in there when the scud missiles come i'll tell you about that 
So, um, as the days went on, you know, you get used to it. Working on the flight line, like I said, I worked 12 midnight to 12 noon. So, on the flight line, we had a chow hall. It was a good little walk. You had to walk to it. So, in the morning, um, we would go down, walk to go get breakfast. And then, when I got off from work, I would go and get lunch. Sometimes, if I, I was really tired and I didn't feel like eating, I would skip lunch, depending on what I might have had in the tent eat some Vienna sausages and crackers and call it a day. And then I would get up and eat dinner and then go back to sleep till it's time for me to go to work. So I usually got two meals in if I didn't get all three. So on a good day, I got all three. While we were over there, um, my mom was just fit to be tied. But what she did at that time, she was a bookkeeper and she was a bookkeeper for Kmart. So she put up the fact I was I was one of the few employees that had a family member that was over in Desert Storm. And so what they did was they all got together and they would send me a care package like once or twice a month. So I made a list of what I wanted. And I tell you what, I said I wanted chocolate chip cookies, um, Vienna sausages. I think I might have asked for sardines. Um, whatever the list was that I made. I had an overabundance. So a lot of us were getting care packages, so we would trade off stuff. Then um, there were so many Americans that wrote us. It was just overwhelming. We had bags and bags of letters from people who were writing us and sending us cards and letting us know that we were okay. So they requested that if we would, you know, pick one or two people to write back to, you know, let them know that we got their, their letters and cards. Of course, we're getting ready to have a dang on um, commercial. So um, I picked a lady. I want to say she was in Missouri. I know she was me, uh, Wisconsin. She was Midwest, and she lived on a farm. So she would write and tell me. I knew she had to be an older lady because she would write and tell me about... Um, farm life and what she did during the day and you know I'm sitting in the middle of the desert it was pretty interesting and so I would write her back she told me about her family I want to say she had a daughter her husband I'm not sure if she had a son or not I know she had a daughter um she went to church a lot she was a Christian and this was interesting to me because before I had become a Christian I didn't know what it meant to lay hands on anybody and use the oil as a point of contact to God and you know, um, holy oil and all this stuff like that. So she would tell me, you know, about her services and things like that. And that they would pray, they were praying for us over in, um, in Saudi and wherever else we were at, as far as desert storm was concerned. So it was great. I, you, me and her were pen pals all the way until I left. I'm trying to think, I can't remember if I wrote her after I got back to let her know I was back, but then after that, we never really talked. And it might have been on me because I was trying to get my head back into the game once I got back to the United States. But I really thank her. It would be neat if she just happened to see. I doubt if she would watch my YouTube, but it'd be neat if um, she would hear it. And I'd like to tell her thank you. She got me through a lot of days, her, let her letters did. It was very appreciated. And then I would send um, letters here and there to other people, but she was my main pen pal. And so she was, her and her church sent stuff. We had people sending stuff. Oh my gosh. They sent so much that, you know, they would put it in the rec center and you could just come and pick things that you like, you know, that they had out on the table or whatever. So that was, that was really nice. For the most part, the days were pretty much the same. You know, you went to work, you came home, you slept. I mean, because you were work at 12 hours. So you only had 12 hours off. That's why sometimes I didn't eat. So if I wanted to sleep more than eat, then that's what I did. And the first couple of weeks, I think I told you guys that might have been the first month. I know for one week, we had to wear our chem gear. We could not take it off. And so it was crazy because I don't know if any of you have seen the chemical gear that the military wear, but they look like green fatigues. The fatigues are the military uniform. They use now the um, camouflage, but before that, they used the ones that were all green. So the chem gear was like all green, but is lined with charcoal. 
So it's kind of thick. So you have on these big old pants and this big old jacket over your uniform. Plus, you got to carry your mask with you. You have a helmet. I mean, you just have so much stuff that you're carrying with you. You got um, canteen. You got the helmet. I'm trying to think if we had to wear flak vests at some, at some point. Because I'm thinking we did. It was a lot. A lot to carry with you. And so, because we they didn't know what was going to happen as far as them sending missiles and things like that or, or doing chemical warfare, we had to wear that. And you talking about wearing that for five days? Oh, my gosh. And it was hot over there, too. I was so happy when we could go and take a shower because you couldn't take it off, so you didn't wash. My thing was this. Am I burning something? Uh, let's see here, y'all. What does it smell like? <clears throat> oh. oh, crap. I think I burnt. I did. Well, there will be no black eyed peas. Grandma just burnt those up. And there was plenty of water in there. It was quick. Shoot. Mm. Let's see about the carrots. You know what? There are some days when you should cook and some days when you know you probably should not. And today was probably a day and I should not cook, have cooked. You know what? And I know that. I can tell in my spirit. I'm one of those people that really believe in cooking when your heart is in it. And apparently, I said I was going to do this, but I guess my heart wasn't really into cooking today. So it looked like it would be carrots, potatoes, and um, I guess I could do the screen, string beans. I'll do them when I get off. I don't let me make this too long. So I'll do it when I get off and watch those. Crap. I'm glad it was a small bag. The girl got the wrong thing I had ordered through Instacart. Anyway, where was I? Oh, the chem gear. My question was, though... If once they drop chemicals and we couldn't take the chem gear off unless you were at a point, uh, um, one of the um, wash stations where you could go and they um, spray you down with chemicals and all this stuff to make sure you don't have any chemicals on you. And then you, it's like a process you go through of taking off your chem gear and then making sure you don't have chemicals on you and you being in a safe area. So we didn't have that many of those. I want to say we had maybe two on the flight line, one on each end. But I'm like, what if you got to go to the bathroom? Do, could you, if you can't take your chem gear off, how do you go use the bathroom? You seems to me you would get contaminated. And seeing that the chem gear didn't work once it got wet, you didn't want to use the bathroom in it. And then what about rain? I just had so many questions about the chem gear suit. And then the mask in itself. I don't know if any of y'all seen them. Originally, when I first got in the military, we had the kind that had like the canisters on the side. Um, the CPAP machine kind of, old CPAP machines kind of look, the mask kind of resembles a Kim Gear um, mask. But those things were hard to breathe in. You had to really learn how to breathe very slowly. You couldn't get excited or anything, and you didn't want to talk too much because you had to be able to control your breathing to be able to get enough air in and expel enough. When we went to the ones that had the clear mass across the front, and then you had the um, screwing canisters at the bottom, those were much better. But even still, it was a process of learning how to wear that mask. 
I tell you, I mastered it. Because when I was in Germany, we used to have to play the war games, which I hated. But I was very thankful when I went to Desert Storm that we had played. But we had to play them war games for like seven days. I think we did it every quarter, something like that. Ooh-wee. And then they made us Augie Doggies. That's a whole nother story. But anyway, I learned to, I mastered. The best way for me to breathe was to go to sleep. And nobody could tell if you were sleeping inside the mask. So anyway, um, yeah, wearing that Kim gear was a lot. Uh, you know, you just got used to your schedule. I remember on our days off because they would try to give us, I think, at least a day off on a yeah, I think a day off we were able to get. Um, so you can wash. I'm trying to think, where did we wash clothes at? I, did we have a wash tent? We had to. There was a place. You know, I don't even remember where it was. But we had to have a wash tent for us to be able to wash clothes. Hmm. I don't remember where it was. But um, I have brought... They gave us camouflage uniforms, but they were desert camouflage to blend in. So they were like the beige, the brown, had a little black in them, and desert boots. So I had bought my green fatigues because we no longer wore them anyway, the all green ones. We was wearing the green camouflage when we were back in the United States. So I cut mine off and made me some booty booty shorts because I was going to be like MASH. If you're old enough, you remember the show MASH, I was going to be like Hot Lips. So I cut my shorts off, and I was wearing my little booty cut-off fatigue shorts around the, the tent campus or tent city. <laughs> and lo and behold, the commander sent down um, a strict letter that we were going against the um, military code by cutting our uniforms up and making them into booty shorts. So we were banned from wearing those. I thought that was crazy, but hey. They banded us from wearing the cut-off booty shorts. It was interesting living in a tent with 12 other women because all kinds of crazy stuff happened. One of the things that was great, though, uh, we had a wood... I know you're going to say you can't believe this, but we actually had a woodworking tent. And so there were guys who were real crafty with building stuff. And so I had put in a request for me to have a desk. It was like a desk... It was a shelf, but a desk because they had the top part they had where it closed, but it opened up to where it was big enough for me to write. They got more commercials in that little spring where you could write and I could eat on. And then we would just hook it back up. And then at the bottom, it was a place for me to put my shoes with my boots. It's not like I had a whole lot of shoes. I'm thinking I might have brought some tennis shoes or something. And then I myself made myself a closet. Well, with the help of the guys over at the woodworking tent. But I made myself a closet with a pole where I could hang up stuff. Um, and so that you, I used that as part of my partition to um, separate myself from my neighbor. Then I told you that in the trailer that I was in working, the parachute shop worked there. And these were the guys who made the parachutes for the aircraft. For the pilots if they ever had to jump out so because he didn't have nothing to do and we were there he was over there by himself and i was in mine um i went over there and with his help he helped me make a curtain after i made mine and everybody wanted one where i could curtain off the other part so when i came in i could just close it off and it'd be like my own little teeny tiny little space and it helped because people were working different shifts so when I mean, you wanted to go to sleep, it helped. You know, if you didn't want to be bothered, you just needed some time to yourself. You know, this was just a lot going on mentally, so you had a little space to go to. Um, I know the um, other thing was I am a person that I don't like rodents. I'm not a bug person or any of that. Like, I'm sitting here looking at this ladybug. But... In the desert, there are desert mice. So with us getting all this food and stuff from people sending it, family, friends, and people, you know, just wanting to support the military, they realized they didn't have to go hunting for food. So they were coming in our tent. And I tell you what, 
at first I was so scared of these things because you would come home and they would have eaten up your chocolate chip cookies. They couldn't get into the um, Vienna sauces and stuff like that. So I started making it where I just only had stuff that either I ate it up and took it out, just stuff that I figured they couldn't get into. But after a while, you know what? I used to be so tired that I used to be like, bump it. Go on, eat you some. I ate as much as I'm going to eat. And they didn't even bother me to have mice in the tent because everybody had mice in the tent. Yeah. Okay, shoot. I'm at the 20 mark. Let me stop here because I don't know how long it's going to take for this one to load. So you guys have a wonderful Sunday. And that's such a beautiful little picture there. We will have part four sometime this week. And I will talk to you later. And thank you guys for some of the most beautiful compliments and nice things that you say in the chat. I am just always so pleasantly surprised. You know, you guys are so awesome. Thank you. Bye.